Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode six of Yankees Mania. I am your host, Gavin Primavera, and today we're going to go over a few topics. Um, so, one big baseball news. As you can see, first of all, I am back in the dorm room setting out of the garage setting as we are back at school finally for the second semester. So, let's get into baseball. Um, so, our first topic we're going to talk about today is Carlos Correa has a new agent. And I'm honestly surprised a little bit this isn't getting more traction around the league. Um, again, Correa is a Boris client now, which is huge to me because considering I think it's very interesting storyline that Correa, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Seeger signed with Texas, who was also a Boris client for 10 years, $325 million earlier in the offseason. Everyone suspected Seeger would be a member of the Yankees, or at least people thought there would be some dialogue at least. It didn't really even seem like there was much dialogue. But now that Correa is apparently under, I'm sorry, or that Boris, by the way, I, I, one thing about these topics that people need to understand is Boris works for Correa, just for the record. Don't want that to be misunderstood. Maybe Boris in the back of his head thought, hey, hey maybe, again, for the record, I do not know, but maybe Correa and Boris were talking. Maybe Boris knew that Correa would be a client or, um, or that he, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. But that they would be work, be working together. So maybe Boris in the back of his head thought, "Hey, I had the Yankees on speed dial when I need them when Crea is a client." So maybe that's just something that's in the back of it. So for me, it makes me realize, "Hey, maybe Crea to the Yankees isn't dead after all. Maybe there's a chance it happens." Again, still probably an outside chance, but I think it's an interesting storyline. Um, one thing, obviously, with Boris. That comes with him is that your Yankees are gonna have to pay a lot of money to get Carlos Correa. That is a certainty. Um, again, he's had many big ticket free agents who have gotten a lot of money. You got Garrett Cole, obviously most notably and most recent. That's been a member of the Yankees um, in twenty a few years ago when the Machado Harper sweepstakes were going on. Uh, Boris was openly trying to get the Yankees to sign him. Basically. Um, I'm trying to think of what he was. But it's like dog whistles. Not dog whistles, not like politically. But he was hinting at maybe the Yankees should make an offer and get it in the Harper sweepstakes. Probably to drive up the price. But again, just my point is they've worked together before. It's not outside the realm of possibility Boris is calling up the Yankees once the lockout ends. Um, Ellsbury was a member, was a Boris client years ago, which unfortunately for the Yankees, they know that very well. Um, again, Marcus Simeon is a client who got a huge payday from Texas as well. So, again, it's something to think about, but I think it's very important, and I think it's a, definitely a possibility that Carlos Correa will be a member of the Yankees. I, th I still think it's higher than most people probably think at this point, but I'm not completely ruling it out. I, th I think Boris just threw an entire wrench into the entire Correa sweepstakes. I thought, I thought it was very minimal beforehand, but now I think we've gone from minimal to... Slight chance. I still think it's a, it's. I think I think it's a possibility, which is honestly at this point I'm just grasping at straws here. Not much going on. Come on, just give me something. So our next topic we're gonna get into, and I just think this is a fun. I thought it was interesting to see this. Um, I don't believe I addressed this on the last episode, but in case anyone did not know, <clears throat> Matt Vasgersian is out from Sunday Night Baseball. I believe he, I forgot what his reasoning was, but I believe it was just to, he wants to focus on more local games, MLB Network, whatever it may be. But I'm a big fan of Matt Vasgersian, so I was kind of disappointed to see that. But I believe, I forgot who they actually announced. Um, on, who's going to be doing the play-by-play, -play, I think they did, it might have been Coral Ravitch, but I'm not 100% sure. But one thing that I think is very interesting is David Cohn is getting the color commenta commentary for Sunday Night Baseball, which I think is great, personally. I think David Cohn is um, great at his profession. I think he knows what he's talking about. One, one disappointing thing is I won't be able to watch, and many other Yankee fans out there won't be able to watch him on the Yes broadcast as much. I believe he is. his workload will be decreasing from, I forgot how many games he was working originally, but it will be decreased to right around 50 games. So a pretty significant decrease in workload because David Cohn was on a lot of games last year and years prior, obviously. So that's a big thing. 
Um, so again, very happy for David Cohn, but the Yankees are looking for a new replacement for him because again, you got to make up those games. And one person who's in the running, apparently, which I think is very interesting, is Carlos Beltran. And Beltran's a former Yankee, former Met, obviously, former Met manager for even if it was only a few days, former Met manager who was fired, caught up in the Astros scandals. I think this is a very interesting um, storyline here to follow. I mean, again, I clearly Beltran is someone who knows a lot about the game. He's very knowledgeable. The guy was guy's very well respected, and honestly, obviously, I'm not, I hate that despise the Houston Astros with everything in my body. But if if maybe if the Yankees can get Carlos Beltran into baseball exile, I really wouldn't be that opposed to it. And honestly, I'm sure he would be probably fun to listen to and knowledgeable during the games. Because a lot of col- color commentators throughout the years have, n- not not necessarily on yes, but just throughout the league, I just hear and I'm like, wow. They just don't know what they're talking about. So, again, one, more th- one thing I also uh, want to mention that I think is interesting for the Sunday night games and again, a lot of the um, ESPN football games, there's on ESPN2, there's a lot of people I'm sure may know, there's a Manning cast, which is basically Eli and Peyton giving their, they have special guests on during the game. So instead of at, listening to the actual announcers, you have Peyton and Eli just talking about giving their take on the game while they're interviewing people, such as whoever it may be, LeBron James, The Rock, Aaron Rodgers, whatever, Tom Brady. So, I, so, but, so basically, baseball thought they're going to do their own version of this. Instead of Peyton Manning and Eli, it's going to be Alex Rodriguez and Michael Kay. Wow. Okay. So, I like both of them. I like Michael Kay and A-Rod a lot, but I, re- I just don't know if you're going to get the ratings that ESPN probably envisions with Michael Kay and A-Rod because they're just not um, they're not Peyton and Eli. I don't, I don't really think this... I need to go much further than that. So... Um, again, that's that, um, again, I, I just, I tried to avoid talking about this first because it, it genuinely angers me, and I'm sure you guys know as listening to previous podcasts, but M- the MLB lockout is still ongoing and no progress has been made, base, as far as I know, and as far as the rest of, as, I don't know, maybe it's a fucking disaster. A fucking disaster. I don't really know how else you can describe it, but nothing's being done, and now there's a real possibility that spring training games are missed, plus the regular season being pushed back or games missed. God fucking knows what's going to go on. But again, hopefully we'll be playing baseball soon, but it's just not looking good right now. And again, if people don't know, I've been doing a. Um, people have been emailing me questions, just personal questions about the Yankees, whatever it may be. People have been doing that. And I got one qu- and again, just so you guys know, if you guys have any questions for me that you would like me to answer on the podcast, just email yankeesmaniaceo at gmail.com, and I'll happily answer any of your questions. Um, and hopefully it can make the show at some point. But one question I, I got was, who are your top Yankees of all time, like favorite? <laughs> I thought this was an interesting question because um, – I probably became a fan in 2012-ish. Um, I probably, I've been watching baseball for around a decade now. Big part of my childhood, obviously. Um, so but so I had to really think about this. I actually was drawing it out for a little while. If you, it took me quite a, quite a while to think about this. But I was able to come up with a list. So I said all time for me, it's got to be Judge. I mean, I know that I, I really considered putting Jeter in that spot. But he was just too... He was on the later end of his career. I just didn't feel comfortable putting him one, but I did put him two. So I have Judge one, Jeter two, Didi Gregorius three. Again, just the in my in my time as being a Yankee fan, there have not been that luxury of playoff moments that I hear about other Yankee fans having. It just hasn't been that because the Yankees haven't made many deep playoff runs in the last ten years. But there have been a few, and Didi Gregorius has been has been right in the middle of it. Um, so he's my number three. Um, another guy, I was again I, for these two, I can p- kind of put them interchangeably. But I, I mean, when Luis Severino was in 
2018-2017 Luis Severino. That was just fun to watch. I loved watching that guy play. That was probably the most enjoyable times I've had as a Yankee fan. He was a pleasure to watch, and I cannot wait for next year when he is hopefully dominating. So him, he's 4-5, and five, and he's tied with, I gotta go with him, I absolutely adore the dude, CeCe Sabathia. Again, again, he's another guy where I kind of caught him on the latter end of his career, but he was just an absolute pleasure to watch. Um, just, just a team player. I mean, it was when he retired, it was really a punch in the gut, I think, for the Yankees culture. And, yeah, but those are my top Yankees of all time. For me personally, um, if you want to go an honorable mention, I mean, I don't want to put a – I guess you can go John Carl Stanton. He, he could get in that list next year. I, I really debated putting him on this year. But for now, we're just going to stick with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast today, and we will see you. On, but just for the record, next week the Hall of Fame does come out with their results, so that will certainly be a topic we discuss next week. So we hope we see you guys next time, and you guys tune in. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys.